welcome back. This is Rakesh Nayak. Today we are going to discuss about the third decision algorithm for context-free grammar. But before we start, a small information I'd like to say. In this channel, we produce every video in two different languages. If you want to watch this video in Hindi, kindly follow the link given in the description. And if you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe and press the bell icon so that you will get regular updates from this channel. So, let us start. In our previous video, we have seen the first two decision algorithms for context-free grammar. That is, algorithm for deciding whether a context-free language L is empty or not. And the second one is algorithm for deciding whether a context-free language is finite or not. Today, we are going to deal the third algorithm. In that, we will be deciding whether a given string belongs to a language of a grammar or not. Basically, this algorithm is known as CYK algorithm. And the prerequisite for this algorithm is the grammar must be in Chomsky's normal form. We are going to construct a table checking whether a given string W belongs to that particular grammar or not. Let us see the CYK algorithm. In CYK algorithm, we are going to construct a table like this. If W is a string, and W1 is the first alphabet, W2 is the second alphabet, W3 is the third alphabet, W4 is the fourth alphabet and W5 is the fifth alphabet of the string, then the table will be looking like this. Each row of this particular table corresponds to one length of substring. For example, the bottom row consists of string having length 1, the next row consists of string having length 2, so in that way, the top row consists of string of length W. And this table is useful only for string of length 5. The next thing is, then how to fill the XIZ data? Basically, XII is the set of variable A such that A derives WI is a production in the grammar G. So wherever XII is there, it means X11, X22, X33, X44, X55. So this is how we are going to fill the bottommost row. Now compare at most n pairs of previously computed set in this way to fill the rest of the data. Now if we want to fill the data inside this, then we have to use this formula. Let us try to find with example. Let us say I want to find x12. Then according to the formula, I will be taking x11 and x22. x11 is here, x22 is there and taking these two, I will be filling this data. Next, to find the value of x23, I will be taking x22 and x33. So this data I can fill by taking these two cells. Similarly, x34 data can be filled with x33 and x44 data. So this is how we can fill. So an x45 data can be filled by x44 and x55 data. Already we are having this data and using this data I will get the value of the second row. Now again I will be using this thing. Now I am having the first row and second row filled. I want to find the value in the third row. So to find the value in the third row, let us take x13, then I have to take x11, x23 and x12 and x3. So where are the data? So to find the value of x13, I need to take x11 and x23 and then x12 and x33. And similarly to find the value of x24, I will be taking x22, x34 and x23, x44. And similarly, to find the value of x35, I will be taking x33, x45 and x34, x55. So here are the data available in row 1 and row 2. By taking them, I am filling the data in row 3. Now use this particular formula to fill the row 4. So in row 4, I will be having x14. For 
x14 i will be taking x13 and x44 i will be taking x12 and x34 then i will be taking x12 and x24 similarly for x25 i will be taking this data x22 x35 x23 x45 x24 x55 now the last row that is x15 i will be having these pairs that is x11 and x25 then x12 and x35 then x13 and x45 and x14 and x55 so this is how i am going to fill the data so now you understood how the data are filled while doing an example you will be able to understand properly now let us take an example we are having a grammar with variable s a b and c and the terminal symbols are a and b p is the production rules and s is the starting symbol so we are getting this grammar s derive a b or b c a derive a b or a b derive c c or b and c derive a b or a now let us take the string w equal to a b b a and check whether this particular string belongs to this particular grammar or not so the first thing what we need to do we need to take this particular grammar and we need to fill the string of length 1 so what is the string we are having b a a b a so b a a b a we have written here and for string length 1 we are having this data b a a b a so this b and a comes under which production rule we need to check so for b and a these are the production we are having b we are having the production starting with b for a we are having production starting with a and c so we have written a and c similarly for this a also a and c for this b also the production is starting with b and for a already we are saying the production is starting with a and c so we got this data now we will be using this data to fill the second row now in the second row what we are going to find we are going to find all the string of length 2 so the string of length 2 are b a a a a b and b a now let us take b a so b a i can find from these two locations that is b and a c i'll be taking the cartesian product of b and a c so i'll be getting b a and b c so where i am finding b a and b c in the production b c i am finding in s and b a i am finding with a so i will be writing s and a similarly for this particular a and a substring i will be taking a c and a c take the cartesian product it will be a a a c c a and c c so all these variables are available where these things are not available except c c so c c string i'll get production starting with b so i'll be writing here b the next production is so ac and b i'll take by taking cartesian product i'll get ab and cb i'll search for ab and cb in these production rows where they are available so ab is present in two production starting with s and c and cb is not available at all so i leave cb and i'll write here s and c similarly for the stop string ba i have to take the cartesian product of b and ac b and ac cross product will be ba and bc now i have to search ba and bc here and these productions are starting with s and a so i'll write here s and a so i got the second row filled now by taking the data of second row and first row i have to fill the data in the third row in the third row the data will be of substring of length 3 so i will be getting b a a in the first one then a a b in the second one and a b a in the third one now let us apply the previously discussed formula and find how i can generate b a a now to generate b a a i have to see x13 to fill the data in x13 i have already discussed this x11 
x two three union x one two x three. So where are the data here? B and B again. S A and A C. So I have to take the Cartesian product of these two. So B and B Cartesian product I have to take union S A and A C is Cartesian product I have to take. So it will become B B S A S C A A and A C. Now I have to find under which production rule these symbols are appearing. You can very well check these symbols are not appearing anywhere. So I will write here five. The next substring is A A B. Now to find the substring A A B, I have to use this one. X two two comma X three four, then X two three comma X four four. So these are the data. I have to take Cartesian product of B B union Cartesian product of A C and S C. So I will get B B A S A C C S and C C. Now out of these, which are available in this particular grammar, I have to see only. B derived C C is available, so in place of this particular substring, I will be writing B. Now the next substring is A B A. Now to find A B A, so it is nothing but X three five, and to find X three five, I will be having X three three and X four five union X three four and X five five. So these are the locations of the data. I have to take the union of Cross product of A C S A and S C A C and the cross product will be A S A A C S C A S A S C C A and C C. Now I have to search under which production rules these symbols are appearing. You can say only C C is appearing; others are not there. And C C production starting with B, so I will be writing here B. Now the first three. Rows are completed. I am going to see the fourth row, which will be of string length four. So I will be getting substring B A A A, then A A B A. Now let us take the first one. And to take the first one, it is nothing but X one four. And to find the value of X one four, I have to take these cells X one three, X four four, union X one two, X three four, union X one one, and X two four. Now these are the locations that I am talking about. Now the value are phi and b union s a s c union b and b. Always phi cross product with b is phi only. So the data you will get is phi s s s c a s a c and b b. Now we have to search under which production rule these symbols are appearing. So You can see there is no symbol appearing in this particular grammar, so I will be writing here five. And the next substring is A A B A. For A A B A, it is nothing but X two five. X two five equal to X two two X three five union X two three X four five union X two four X five five. And these are the location of the data. I have to take the cross product and then I have to take the union. So I have to take A C B is cross product union B S A is cross product union B A C is cross product. So the data I will get is A B B B S B A B A and B C. And these things I will get in this particular production at this particular location. So I am getting S A and C in this location. I will write S A and C. So I got the data filled with row one, two, three, and four. I have to check the last one. It is row five. It means it's supposed to take the length five. And the string will be B A A B A. Now to find this, I have to check these strings. It means I have to check X one five equal to X one one, X two five. Union x one two x three five union x one three x four five union x one four x five five and these are my locations. You can check here. And after that, I have to find the data. That is B and S A C is cross product union S A and B is cross product union phi and S A is cross product union phi and 
AC is cross product. These things are anyhow are five. So I am getting BS, BA, BC, SB, AB, phi and phi. Now I have to check under which production rule these symbols are appearing. I can find S, A and C. These symbols are appearing. So I will write here S and AC. Now you can see here. Now we have already discussed S is the starting symbol. And S is available here. So you can say because S belongs to X15. Then we can say the string B A A B A is in this particular map. So this is how we are going to apply the algorithm to find whether a particular string belongs to a particular grammar or not. I hope you understood it. If you understood, give me a like and share among your friends. If you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe also. See you on our next video. Till then, take care. Bye.